tea time. Welcome everybody, Soda and the Grim Brothers here, and it's time for another episode of Tea Time. Now then, for today's tea, I went uh, going through my uh, back catalogue of teas, and by which I mean my uh, the uh, cupboard in the kitchens, uh, getting the teas out of the back, as I thought to myself, hmm, well there's a lot of teas I tried out in my earlier days before I started uh, recording them in this tea book. And so I went through my old, uh, which I've of course uh, had in tea times before, but didn't have the tea book when I started doing tea times. I got this uh, last Christmas, I think. In any case, I um, decided to go through my uh, teas, which I've not actually recorded in my tea book, and figured, well, they're so long ago in the tea time. I mean, like, dear gosh, we're over a hundred tea times. They figured that most people won't have even watched those older ones anyway. So this is all brand new to you. So I'm having today my Ceylon tea, which I can't remember whether I liked or not. Again, I've... Uh, <laughs> I only had it a few times, and then of course other teas took over, you know, I, I kind of get too many, tea. it's kind of like video games actually with my teas, you know, I get tea, really like it, but another tea comes along, so I never actually finish the first tea, much like my video games, where I'd never complete them, because <laughs> another game I wanted to try out comes along. <laughs> In any case, uh, today's a Ceylon tea, it's a black tea, which uh, recommended time is uh, for brewing is 3-4 to four minutes, uh, my brand is Wittard. And information on it, uh, tea grown in the cool, clean air of Sri Lanka, previously known as Ceylon. It has an intense, bright taste to it, crisp and satisfying, a tea enjoyable at any time. And we'll be putting that to the test when I lay a habit. But for now, let's uh, move on to the subject of today's tea time. And I've got to say, today's tea time has kind of been going a bit weirdly, because I'm not sure when it's going to upload. I mean, a lot of times I don't know when I will upload these times. But this one in particular, because originally I was going to sit down to record a Nintendo Direct. Uh, however, the Nintendo Direct got delayed by an earthquake, so yeah, that happened. And so I'm sitting down to talk about a subject that I've been thinking about for a long time. However, I have no title to give it. Because every time I try to think of a title, it usually ends up like a paragraph long. Or it's short and to the point, but it's easy to confuse it for something else, or it doesn't imply the meaning. So at this moment in time, when I'm going to talk about this subject, I don't have a title to offer you. Uh, so hopefully by the time I actually upload this tea time and edit it and such, I'll have thought of a short, snappy title which uh, gets the point across. Today's tea time is regarding the Wii U, because of course the Wii U is worth talking about in 2018. Admittedly, it has had an update recently, so hey, yeah, relevant. Yeah, Wii U is relevant in 2018. Hurrah! But it's actually about, you know, the, the, there was problems with the Wii U. It didn't do particularly well, as much as I love the system. And... There was a lot of things going against the Wii U. It's poor naming, it's poor marketing, Nintendo not starting the develop, uh, the sort of study and development of HD until it was too late, and so they were behind in terms of HD development. You know, there's a lot of things going against the Wii U. One thing I felt that could have bolstered its uh, chances more, if more games were actually made for it. Because it often felt at times that the Wii U wasn't getting very many games made specifically for it, whereas its uh, sibling, the 3DS, was getting tons of games made for it. And so I looked at the 3DS library, and there was quite a few times where I thought to myself, man, this would have been great on the Wii U. This could have actually potentially helped the Wii U. So I thought, that's a subject there. This will be six games that are from the 3DS that I think would have been better, or at least nice to have also been on, the Wii U. And I don't necessarily mean ju uh, simply just better for the game itself. Of course, being on a console with more power, there's more things that could do with it. Uh, it might have been dampened in sales because the 3DS had a lot more sales. But I mean, the, it might it would have been better for the Wii U itself. Because, hey, more games, any games would have been good for the Wii U because it often went through droughts. Subject for another time, though. In any case, let's begin this topic. And, of course, for a top six, let's, of course, start with the most natural number, question mark. Yes, the question mark is my first one. And the reason for it is the this 3DS to Wii U games... I'm thinking of this in the perspective of what Nintendo could have done to support the Wii U more and to help Wii U's chances. So I'm not going to be mentioning third-party 3DS games, except this one kind of goes into a very awkward realm, because the IP itself is third-party. However, Nintendo did support this game, and one of Nintendo's studios, uh, Brownie Brown, uh, now known as 1UP Studio, I believe, actually worked on this game. And that game is Level 5's Fantasy Life. 
Fantasy Life is, hmm, let's see, kind of like Rune Factory in a way. It's a sort of a life sim game where you choose where you choose a job and uh, you get to live out that job in a fantasy realm. Of course, that job can be, of course, more plain task of fishing, ing and such, or mining, to more adventurous tasks like the warrior of the realm or the wizard going out and exploring and all that, or the hunter and you know all that sort of stuff. And it's a really fun game. I didn't get too far in it because, again, as I pointed out before, um, other games come along and I get uh, held up on time. But it was a really enjoyable experience that I particularly liked. Um, too many options, of course, are my problem because you can change job at any point. So I think, oh, should I change job now? You know, too many options I end up debating and I end up seeing an umming and ahhing. It's like, oh, no, was this the right decision? Should I reset? Should I restart? You know, that sort of thing. But... The sheer variety was also its benefit because there were so many different jobs. It was a simple but fun combat system and the world itself was charming. A bit of a plain fantasy world but that was kind of the point. It really did feel like you were living a fantasy life. In with those sort of games such as say Harvest Moon for instance, those sort of life sim games, some people argue that these sort of things are better on handheld systems and because you can pick up and go at any point, you know, play them in short bursts. For me, though, if I'm playing those sort of games, like, you know, Harvest Moon, A Wonderful Life, I want to sit down, relax, and have a long experience of it. I want to immerse myself for it. It's my relaxation hour, not my relaxation seconds or minutes. It's my relaxation hour. I want to sit down at the comfort of a chair, sort of playing through the game. And I feel Fantasy Life, its features would have worked just as well on the Wii U. Uh, admittedly, spot pass it did, street pass it did use to a degree, but that sort of feature could have been done via the Miiverse instead. Uh, Sonic Lost World did that sort of thing. But otherwise, the simple combat, the charming style, the uh, mobile jobs, all of that could have been done really well with the Wii U and, you know, um, sort of interactions done through Miiverse instead of street pass sort of thing. And I think it would have been a great game. Again, I'm putting this as question mark because whilst it would be in my top six, the fact that the IP itself is owned by Level 5, unfortunately its sequel is going to be a mobile game and looks like a stripped down version of the original, so yeah, a sequel with less content than the original, funny that. Um, so as that, you know, because it's that question mark and it's like, could Nintendo have influenced them to put on the Wii U? Or would it have remained on the 3DS? Wouldn't know. So I'm not sure if that option was up to Nintendo or whether it was up to Level 5. But the IP is Level 5, but Nintendo was involved, so yeah, question mark it is. Number 6. Steel Diver Sub Wars. Now, Steel Diver was a 3DS launch title, a new Nintendo IP that everyone proceeded to ignore. Hey, it was even a new Nintendo IP created by new, young, up-and-coming Nintendo staff, uh, headed by, uh, with Miyamoto sort of overseeing these new Nintendo staff making Steel Diver. You know, again, everyone ignored it. But they took the concept of Steel Diver from the 3DS and decided to make it into an FPS free-to-play game called Steel Diver Sub Wars. Not one that a lot of people will really remember, but, I mean, heck, more people remember Steel Diver because it's got a gun in Smash Bros. I expected it to be a stage, but no, they made Steel Diver's Blue Shark submarine into a gun instead. Strange, but yeah. Steel Diver Sub Wars was a first-person game, uh, sort of submarine-based, obviously. First-person FPS sea-travelling game. You know, there was sort of, like, missions where you sort of went through the loops and such, or, you know, traverse from one area to the next. But, of course, there was also the multiplayer mode where you were shooting down the enemy subs and all that. And it was a very slow, methodical-paced game. It was, you know, it, it was a game where you're all playing as snipers, in a sense, because you're all having to be a lot slow and careful. I never got around to the online experience. I tried the free-to-play demo. It was enjoyable, but I immediately felt it wasn't suited to the 3DS. It matches took too long. There was more of a... The sort of screen, I felt, would have been bigger to be able to see everything with a wider area, such as the Wii U gamepad, you know, or the Wii U, you know, on the TV screen through the Wii U. The slower pace to it, the longer pace of levels, and... You know, the longer time you'd have to be holding the controller and such, as well as the wanting to be able to survey as much of an area as possible because, you know, a submarine, you got a free, huge 3D war environment and you want to detect people with the radar and such. All of these factors make me feel that it would have been better as a Wii U title. Not necessarily a Wii U physical title, I don't think there's enough substance there, but a Wii U eShop title, I think Steel Diver Sub Wars would have had more to stand out. And it's not like the Wii U was brimming with FPS games, or most genres of games. The only thing the Wii U really had in spades was 2D platformers. Which is why, although there would have been some I could have mentioned, I avoided mentioning 2D platformers in this list. 
But yes, yeah, still Diver Sub Wars. I thought it would have been better on the Wii U. Uh, would it have sold particularly well? Uh, probably not. I mean, don't think Steel Diver really resonates with people too often, but I feel it would have uh, captured more attention on the Wii U as something unique for the Wii U to have, whereas on the 3DS, you got far too many games for it to unfortunately compete with. Moving on into number five, and hmm, somewhat controversial, because I will admit, part of the reason this game was on the 3DS was because it was built off a 3DS game engine, so a 3DS game already made, where they just used the assets from that. The Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes. Now, of course, I'm going to say this because it's a free-player game. You uh, effectively have to have free players. You can play it solo, but it's not nearly as fun. However, a free-player game is a lot easier to do when you only need the console and, you know, a screen and the two controllers, rather than with a 3DS where everyone has to suddenly bring their own 3DS and their own copy of the game. That suddenly makes it a lot more difficult to organise that sort of thing, because you have to rely on everyone getting the game. Rafi would have probably loved playing Triforce Heroes, a game he got uh, with us, but me and Kiris didn't have copies of Triforce Heroes. That, you know, way too expensive and all that, and yeah, it's really odd. Like... You know, it's not like it wouldn't be uncommon for the sort of Four Swords-esque style of game to be on a console. They did it with Four Swords Adventure, Rafi's favourite Legend of Zelda game. And so I think it would have worked perfectly fine having Triforce Heroes on the Wii U. Some might say, oh, what about, you know, the whole having separate screens going where you want sort of thing. Well, the maps in Triforce Heroes aren't massive to begin with. And there's also the fact that, oh, hey, split screen exists, funny enough. You only need two screens and then, of course, the other player plays on the Wii U gamepad. So it's already not that much of an issue. It just feels to me that it would be a lot more convenient for people to be able to A, get people around to play the game together, and B, to uh, sort of work the mechanics and A, show off, hey, split screen can still be a thing, if Triforce Heroes was on the Wii U instead of the 3DS. Yeah, some might question, oh, what about its art style being, you know, a link between worlds style of art on a, you know, HD console, but to be fair, the GameCube was using SNES, you know, Game Boy Advance slash SNES style graphics for... It's Four Swords Adventures, and that was a really great game, and again, Rafi's favourite Zelda game. Moving on to number four, and oh gosh, uh, this one's a particularly controversial one, I'd say. Fire Emblem Fates. Now, my main reason for this is, in the case of the Wii U, the gamepad is perfect for SRPGs. For some reason, the Wii U didn't have any major Nintendo SRPGs. It's the gamepad, it's perfect for SRPGs and RTS games, and that sort of genre was completely absent on the Wii U. It baffles your mind. It's like if they went through the Wii U's life never releasing R, R Academy or Mario Maker. You know, like, there are some games designed which are just perfect for the Wii U's gamepad's utilisation and all that. And, uh, yeah, they didn't release any SYGs, but they could have done. Fire Emblem Awakening had resurrected Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem was huge at the time. The Wii U needed something to help it succeed and do better, and an SRPG was a sort of genre not yet seen on the Wii U. So, what could have been done? Well, there was an upcoming Fire Emblem game. Why not take the risk in that Fire Emblem has recently become so popular and put it on the Wii U to try and help the Wii U sell? Benefits to this is that you wouldn't have uh, to worry about that whole silly two versions thing which everyone complained about because they then released a cartridge which contained both versions on the same cartridge. That infuriated a lot of people. You could have just had it one disc on the Wii U up the graphics sort of thing, do some sort of impressive with that, and I feel it would also helped Fire Emblem Fates stand out a bit more. Can you see I'm specifically saying Fire Emblem Fates here? Fire Emblem Awakening, we, you know, the series was almost dead at that point, it needed a big hit, and the big hit came on the 3DS, and it probably wouldn't have done nearly as well on the Wii U, and we probably wouldn't be seeing more Fire Emblem games as a result. So it being on the 3DS saved it with Fire Emblem Awakening. In the case of um, the third Fire Emblem game on the 3DS, uh, I think Fire Emblem Echoes? Uh, Shadows of Valentia or something? I think it's Fire Emblem Echoes. The one helps that game and why I feel that one should stay as a 3DS in terms of this, what I'm talking about, and I wouldn't pour it to the Wii U, is that game is more unique compared to Fire Emblem Awakening and Fire Emblem Fates in terms of its style, you know, like you have the dungeon sort of thing, uh, mechanics and all that. And if Fire Emblem Echoes was considered unique even compared, you know, even compared to the rest of the Fire Emblem series before it obviously got remade, when it was back when it was Fire Emblem 2. Um, it was a very different game, and I feel having those two different games on the 3DS, whilst under the Fire Emblem banner, you know, justifies them more. Fire Emblem Fates is effectively just a succession of the stuff in Fire Emblem Waking, though some people will probably argue that Fire Emblem Waking was better, but I haven't played either game, so I can't talk about that. In that case, Fire Emblem Fates' uh, path was more of succession rather than 
uh, different ideas per se. And so I feel that sort of idea would have been better utilised on the Wii U, giving the Wii U an SRPG and giving more ways for the Wii, for Fire Emblem Fates to not so much change up things, but to just enhance the experiences that were delivered through Fire Emblem Awakening. And so that's why I think at my number four position, Fire Emblem Fates would have been a nice title to have on the Wii U for, you know, those various reasons. Would it have sold as well? Maybe not. But then again, Fire Emblem was really big at that point and stuff like Smash Brothers had uh, helped really accentuate as well recently and with, you know, the extra characters. So I feel Fire Emblem Fates would have, uh, could have actually still managed to do pretty well on the Wii U, particularly in the fact that there wasn't, you know, many games out around that time for it. So... It would have had a free market to itself. Moving on to number three. And uh, this is where this and the next one are kind of the two games that really think of this subject. Dylan's Rolling Western, The Last Ranger. Dylan's Rolling Western is an eShop series that I quite enjoy. Uh, admittedly, what I've enjoyed is from what I've played of the first game. But for my understanding, the second game is, in a, in a similar case to the Fire and Fates thing, it's the first game but enhanced in different ways. You've got some extra campaign stuff and a better story to it. And in the case of Dylan's Rolling Western, I haven't gone super far in it, but I've really enjoyed every moment I've had of it. But much like Steel Diver Sub Wars, it's quick to, it becomes quickly apparent that, oh my gosh, these levels take forever. Handhelds are often, to their benefit, uh, designed with shorter levels, so you can play your games in short bursts and stop more frequently. Dylan's Rolling Western, uh, although it's really well designed with the 3DS in mind, such as the touchscreen mechanics and all that, has really long levels because you have to plan things out for this uh, for the tower defense mechanic of the game, and then of course experience the actual tower defense mechanic in the game when you have to when you have to stop the exploring and the setting up defenses to go take down all the groks which are approaching and then go about repairing all the towers to fight against the fend off the groks, and it takes a really long time. It's exhausting playing a level. Lots of fun, but exhausting. I can't, you know, I could only do two levels a day sort of thing because I would be shattered from having to, you know, both the mental preparation and the physical preparation of uh, sort of uh, playing the game all on a handheld screen. And I feel the Wii U could have done basically everything Dylan's Rolling Western was doing, doing but better. And again, I'm not mentioning the other one because the other one's uh, the third entry, which is thankfully getting a physical release, is coming out so late that it wouldn't be any good if you know to suggest it on the Wii U. But Dylan's Rolling Western, The Last Ranger, much like a Fireman Fates, it's more about enhancement rather than change. It would have been really good to see it get even further enhanced on the Wii U. Uh, it would have been really nice to be able to play on a system where it's more of a sit down and comfort sort of thing. Um, where it's best suited for the mechanic. And I feel like I could hold the Wii U gamepad for much far longer hours than I can hold the 3DS. The usage of the touchscreen to be able to roll Dylan about uh, would have, again, worked really well on the Wii U because you'd even have a larger touchscreen to make it easier to do. And so, yeah, Dylan's Rolling Western The Last Ranger, I feel, would have been a really good title to have on the Wii U in either eShop or physical instead of um, on the 3DS. For an example, I was actually expecting the next Dylan's Rolling Western game to be on the Wii U because its other eShop uh, contemporary, as it were, Mallow in uh, Pushmo World, had, well, Pushmo series, had Pushmo World released on the Wii U eShop. So I kind of expected Dylan to follow suit, but he never did. Hey, at least he's got a physical uh, 3DS game, though. That's pretty cool. And I'll look forward to playing that at Christmas time. Number two, the other game that made me think of um, this subject, Fossil Fires Frontier. Now, the thing about Fossil Fighters Frontier is not so much the game length. The game length, you know, the way the game's set up is works really well for the 3DS. It's a pretty fun game. It works um, well with the system it's on. It utilizes the system it's on features really well. Uh, but the thing with a lot of these points is the Wii U can do pretty much everything the 3DS can. The only things it lacks is the screens aren't as close together for the dual screen mechanic, but it can still do them with the gamepad and TV screen. And it can't do Street Pass. Pretty much everything else, the Wii U can do that. You know, it's got no, it can do everything the 3DS can. On that note, though, one thing the Wii U lacks actually improve makes me think the Fossil Fires Frontier would have been better on the Wii U. And the thing the Wii U lacks is Pokemon. And without Pokemon, Fossil Fighters Frontier has no competition on the Wii U for its type of game and could actually flourish. Otherwise, Fossil Fighters Frontier, a Pokemon-style game involving uh, collecting up fossils and reviving them as dinosaurs for uh, making, forming a team to compete in turn-based RPG battles, has to compete with Pokemon. And frankly, as 
exhibited by the history of video games, no matter even the good ones in its monster collecting genre, you can't compete with Pokemon. You just can't. It's never worked. You can do well, but you can't do better. And Fossil Fighters Frontier, I felt, would have had more of a leg up and would have grabbed more people's attention if it effectively marked as Pokemon isn't going to be on the handhelds, but this game where you get to coll uh, sort of ke collect all these cool fossils and resurrect them as dinosaurs with unique abilities and all that, it will be on the Wii U. You know, you'll get a console monster collecting experience through Nintendo on your console, yeah. And, you know, that just seemed to make more sense to me, particularly in the, the gamepad was the moment where it was perfect for it because they had the touch screen, the monster, you know, the actual getting the fossils out, unearthing them from the wall, is actually a big part of Fossil Fighter and a lot of fun doing it at the time. It's like that one Pokemon Diamond and Pearl mini game, but much more extensive and a lot more fun with a lot more depth. And it's a big part of it. It would have been perfect in the Wii U, and no other console I'm following on from that is going to be as good for it as the Wii U. The Wii U was the prime opportunity to have a Fossil Fighter game on a console, and they kind of passed it up, and it's a real shame, because Fossil Fighter's Frontier has been a lot of fun, and would have, I feel, be, stand out a lot more on the Wii U, whereas it kind of got, I think it was around Pokemon season anyway, where it kind of got buried by, of course, Pokemon. But Pokemon doesn't even need to be out at the time. It just needs to be exist, and it kind of buries anything in the monster collecting genre. So, real shame that. But yeah, I, I think it would have actually done better on the Wii U, and I would have liked to have seen Fossil Fighters Frontier do better, because I really enjoy it. Okay, I'm going to try out my Ceylon T now before getting on to number one. I think you'll all find number one to be a very interesting choice. But for now, Ceylon T. Mmm. Interesting aftertaste. Mm. Mixed opinions on its aftertaste, but it's interesting. You know, it uh, stands out a bit more. Because at first it just kind of tastes like a regular, you know, English breakfast black tea. A little bit different. I'm having it with milk, by the way. Um, just for those who wanted to know. Mm. Slightly sweet. A little bit of malt, I'd say. But I'd say it's more of a slight sweet tinge to it. Mm. I think this would have been better warmer. I've let it get a bit too cold. Uh, again, this tea time's been going on for a little too long. But yeah, it's actually pretty nice. Yeah, pretty nice. Uh, we'll have to try it again when it's warmer. It's got a slight soft... Uh, it's a bit standard at first, but it's got a decent enough aftertaste. Nothing too overpowering, though. Again, the milk kind of helps uh, uh, restrain that. But it's decent. I can have this in place of English breakfast, much like the 1886 tea, and I wouldn't mind too much. Although I'm not sure how well it goes with biscuits. <laughs> For my tea and biscuits in the morning. Okay, so that was uh, Ceylon Tea. And this will be my number one, the number one game that should have been on Wii U instead of 3DS, or at the very least, should have been on the Wii U as well as the 3DS. That game is Metroid Prime Federation Force. Okay, yeah, Metroid Prime Federation Force wasn't too well received. However, not only was the game originally intended to be released on both the 3DS and Wii U, because Next Level Games, the people who worked on the Punch-Out games, as well as Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, actually stated that they were originally going to be making this game for the Wii U and 3DS. So it, it got robbed of its opportunity to be on the Wii U. But not only was it meant to be on the Wii U, but one of the biggest criticisms could have been fixed with it being on the Wii U. I love its chibi art style. But if it was a Wii U exclusive, they probably wouldn't have gone with a chibi art style because of they'd have more room. You know, they went with the chibi art style to suit the handheld nature of, you know, the 3DS. They went for a console version, they could have had, you know, the full-on Metroid Prime art style for these Federation Force soldiers. Or, you know, something akin to their original art style they uh, displayed when Next Level Games pitched a Metroid idea to Nintendo. Uh, they had a very comic-esque art style to it. They could have gone with a different art style, which would have alleviated one of the initial biggest criticisms uh, folks were having at the time. Admittedly, you wouldn't be able to fix the absence of Samus as the playable character. However, the Federation Force concept, I feel, would have worked a lot better on con on the Wii U. There wasn't exactly FPS games galore on the Wii U, unlike the Wii, which uh, had of quite a few. But, you know, a team-based FPS game with online, much better idea on a console. I'm not sure this strange idea of making handhelds with online as a big emphasis. Uh, it's like your online connection is usually going to be better with, you know, by your, you know, your console, you know, close to your router rather than just using random routers you find about the place for the handouts. In any case, 
Metroid Prime Federation Force. Team-based FPS game with a possible enhancement to its graphical style. Would have done a lot better on the Wii U. People would have been more receptive to it. Absence of Samus would have been a hard pill for people to swallow, but it would have still been a lot a lot more appealing to people. Uh, if it was like, oh, you get to explore a new facet of the Metroid universe, not in a kiddish, chibi art style. As much as I love said kiddish, chibi art style. And the team-based stuff all feels like the sort of stuff that would have been better, you know, either on the sofa or, you know, through online activity. That sort of thing I feel would be a lot better done, you know, with the console-based experience in mind. And the Wii U gamepad can, of course, like I said, do pretty much everything the 3DS can. You could have probably even thrown a, you know, a couple other things with of the ideas which people had for, oh, Metroid Prime is a great idea for the Wii U because you can do this with the gamepad or this with the gamepad. A lot of people were throwing out concepts and they could have utilized some of those concepts with Metroid Prime Federation Force. Might not have been the Metroid Prime that everyone wanted, but it would have been a lot more appealing to people as a game if it was on the Wii U with a more serious art style to it. Yeah. And, uh... Although, you know, the level structure, again, is at least designed with handheld in mind, as well as the art style, but that's kind of actually, ironically, to its detriment, because that's not what people wanted from Metroid. I enjoyed it, but I felt that having it as a console-based experience with consoles in mind would have improved the game's reception and its chance to succeed a heck of a lot more. And so those are the games on the 3DS that I kind of wished were on the Wii U, to give the Wii U a bare chance. Could they have made the Wii U sell a ton? Uh, as kind of mentioned before, the Wii U had lots of problems with it uh, outside of the games. And frankly, if Super Smash Brothers and Splatoon, uh, you know, breakout success, couldn't manage to sell the Wii U, um, then frankly, uh, the Wii U's chances were never going to be... It was never going to truly succeed. But it could have at least done, you know, as well as the GameCube, if not better. And I feel some of these games would have uh, potentially helped it get its leg up, or at least give those people who actually did support the Wii U more variety in their options. It's not that like the 3DS was wanting for games. Sure, the 3DS struggled in its first uh, year, year and a half, but it started to succeed quite quickly, unlike the Wii U. The Wii U needed more support, and it was just never given the support it needed to succeed. But anyway, those are my thoughts. If you've got any games that you can think of on the 3DS that would have been great on the Wii U, either exclusively on the Wii U to, in order to get more of a console styling to it and different ideas implemented to it based off the console nature, or if you feel, you know, a game that could have been shared as both a 3DS and a Wii U title, uh, feel free to uh, mention those. I'd love to hear the, your uh, alternative ideas. I I actually had a list of a few ideas and narrowed it down to this uh, six uh, through, well, six and a question mark through uh, various reasonings. But yeah, love to hear them and cheerio!